Good evening one and all. Today we will see another concurrent control mechanism called as timestamp based protocols. Now, what are this? This is a concurrency control method where the timestamps are used instead of locks for ensuring isolation and serializability. So, they will ensure consistency of the database while allowing concurrent execution. How it works? Each transaction is issued a timestamp. A timestamp generally is the system's uh, clock, or otherwise, it can be a logical counter that can increment that can be incremented with every new transaction. So, whenever it enters the system, it is given a timestamp. Now, how is it given? Assume that TI uh, transaction TI is allocated with a timestamp TS of TI, then a process TJ which enters later will have a higher time stamp showing that it is a younger transaction as it is the clock systems clock time. So, TS of TI if it is a old transaction it will have a time stamp less than the newer trans, uh, transaction TJ. So, schedules are managed using the time stamp based protocol serializably just like your two phase protocol and because this order is given. So, older transactions get their priority. So, they need not wait for longer time. So, deadlock free. Okay. How it works we will just try to see. Now, a ta time stamp is a unique value assigned to each transaction. It usually represents the time at which the transaction enters the system or system's clock time or it can be a logical counter which we will increment with every transaction, new transaction. What are the notations that are going to be used? Whenever a transaction enters, it will be given a time stamp which we call as TS of TI, transaction TI. Okay? Then there are two other trans time stamps which are used which is one is used for reading and one is used for write updates. Now, let us see the read time stamp which we call it as RTS is given on a data item X because read and write action is performed on data objects. So, whenever you have common data then only we are basically talking about the lock or serial order so that there would not be conflicts. So, that is why RTS of X is the read timestamp issued on the data item X, which indicates the largest timestamp of any transaction that has lately updated, last updation. So, the timestamp of the uh, transaction which has successfully read X is going to be updated here. So, that I can I will be able to maintain serially serial order of transactions. A write timestamp which is called as WT or yes, WTS of X is the write timestamp for the data item X. It indicates the largest timestamp of any transaction that has successfully written the data item X. Let us try to see what are the rules that are used to maintain this serializability. Okay? So, the basic idea is to ensure transactions are executed in a serial order consistent with their timestamps. So, I will use this timestamp concept only to perform this actions so that they will be in serial order. So, how it is done? Let us see. Whenever a transaction wants to perform the read operation, let me just say transaction TI request for read on the data item X. Now, whether I should allow you to read or should not allow you to read depends upon the timestamp. So, first we will check the timestamp of TI is it less than the write timestamp on X. That means, if write timestamp is going to be more than the timestamp time stamp of this transaction TI, it means that a younger transaction that is a transaction which has come after this TI has already written X. So, if that has done this is going to be out of serial right because a later transaction has already written means this transaction is late it cannot be allowed to read. So, you just have to roll back you are not allowed to do that whereas if the timestamp of the transaction TI which is requesting for read on data X 
is greater than write time stamp on x then you can because already a previous older transaction has written and you are requesting for writing it now that means you are right you are a, it is a sec, next later transaction younger transaction which is asking for a write now so read now so it should be allowed so already that transaction has written so that you can read now so you are allowed to read and what you are doing because now ti has read you have to update the rts value to the maximum value of ts or uh, time stamp of ti or rts of ti because it is read operation even if a uh, older transaction has read you can be allowed a newer transaction has written okay it has completed you can perform that particular thing i mean older transaction has written which is completed you can perform the read operation but you have to update this read time stamp to the maximum of the earlier read time stamp or this particular current transactions time stamp so that the latest transaction which has updated is there in that okay coming to the write operation again a transaction assume ti asks for the write on data item x what are you supposed to see is there any transaction which is later which has come later to this that means younger transaction has read the data is there any younger transaction which has written the data in both the cases you are saying you are going out of order the transaction which has come after this has performed operations on x then if you are allowed you are not serial you are not sequential so you cannot be allowed so it is going to roll back in both those cases whereas if the transaction id of ti is going to be greater than read transaction or write transaction read transaction and write transaction on x whether a old transaction has read or old transaction has updated now this can also be allowed because you are going in a sequential order and this is a new transaction which has higher time stamp than that so that is allowed to do it and you will update wts that is the right time stamp on x to the new transaction ts of ti okay so that this is ti is the transaction which has last updated highest time stamp okay what is the advantage what is the benefits and drawbacks of time stamp based protocol one is serializability anyway in any concurrent uh, executing schedules we require serializability we should be able to uh, have a result which is equivalent to a serial transaction so serializability is ensured in maintaining the data consistency and maintaining the serial order is uh, achieved through time stamp based protocol so it is one of the benefit the second one is deadlock free because the transactions are never made to wait you are giving higher priority to older transactions they are not made to wait so you can ensured of deadlock avoidance that is free from deadlock and no need to go for your rollback proceed or rollback disadvantages is cascading rollback whenever you are not able to maintain serializability you are not able to maintain that order what are you doing the older transaction which is asking for access you are asking it to roll back when that is roll back many of the dependent transactions also may have to be rolled back so which leads to cascading roll back which is waste of time long transactions these long running transaction may have to roll back again and again due to a conflicts with newer transactions or storage overhead so it requires additional storage for time stamps and may involve maintaining multiple versions of the data items which has updated what what is the time stamp what is the read time stamp write time stamp and for all those things we require data storage at the same time every time before you perform an action you need to cross verify with that particular stored information that is going to be the drawbacks of it that is how anyway with every 
good thing there will be associated overheads if you have to achieve something you have to forego something so you are supposed to make a trade off between them so whenever concepts are given there will be pros and cons cons associated with it always now let's just try to see a uh, implementation of this quickly uh generally the time stamps as we said is going to be the system's clock whenever it enters it is associated with a unique number maybe the time of entry what about your read and write time stamp the general practice is to initialize it with zero or minus infinity so that the first to read or write operation is allowed because time stamps is going to be a positive number so first uh, read or write operation will be allowed so initial value can be zero or negative infinity so let me assume two transactions t1 and t2 with the initial values uh, the time stamp values as 1 and 2 respectively the initial values of rts and wts on data object x is 0 now first t1 tries to read x now what is the condition t1 when it wants to read x the its value the transaction time stamp of t1 should be greater than wts of x so you are checking wts of t1 is 1 and wts of x is 0 so t1 is allowed to read so what will be the value of rts rts is going to be initialized to 1 here okay look at this rts will have the value 1 here here this is 1 and this is zero as it is greater you will have this uh, read allowed and rts is going to be allowed to x okay now t2 wants to write here also you should see that no later or younger transaction has performed anyway in our case t1 and t2 t2 itself is the younger transaction when it wants to write you are saying is ts time stamp of t2 greater than this this is 1 and this is 2 it is greater okay and write time stamp is still 0 and this is 2 2 is greater than 0 so 2 t2 is allowed to write if that is allowed to write the write time stamp will have the time stamp of t2 now so wts will be equal to 2 here rts of x is equal to 1 okay now let me assume t1 wants to write x okay now what is this rts it is uh, wts it is 2 that means a later transaction has already written x value updated now if you are trying to write x will it be in serial order no so will it be consistent i don't want that particular <coughs> drawback so since ts of t1 which is 1 is less than wts of x t1 is rolled back because a newer transaction t2 has already written x okay so in this way time stamp based protocol can manage the order of operations the transaction order to maintain consistency while allowing concurrent execution i allow <coughs> let both of them work together but whenever they are there is a conflict you have to ensure that it is executed in a serial order so that consistency is maintained okay now let me just see another rule optimization rule called as thomas right rule now there is a slight variation to this the thomas right rule is for your it's a optimization of your basic time stamp ordering protocol now it allows certain right operation to be just ignored instead of cross uh, causing transaction rollbacks so thereby improving the system's performance and reducing the unnecessary rollback what it will do the point there which says a newer transaction has updated <coughs> so this particular right you have to roll back it says why roll back just ignore it it's absolute there is no meaning while rolling back i'm not going to achieve anything <coughs> so just don't update it that is what is the rule says see it allows certain out of order writes what does it says instead of rolling back ti the write is just ignored so in our previous example if we see 
when T1 requests for write, the basic timestamp ordering protocol will make it to roll back because timestamp of T1 which is 1 is less than write timestamp of x which is 2. So, it will roll back, but in Thomas write what it says you do not roll back just ignore it just do not write that operation it is enough. Okay? So, why do you think that works? Thomas write operation we said it is a optimizes, optimizes concurrency control because of its efficiency. It just ignores these absolute rights which is meaningless such rights it just ignores instead of rolling back. So, system avoids the overhead of rolling back transactions. So, which they actually do not affect the final result of the database. So, just ignore it and coming to maintenance of serializability. Yes, it ensures the serializability of transactions by only allowing the most recent write to a data item to take effect. So, that is very important, but overall on conclusion what we see is timestamp based protocol does not maintain separate lock system and requesting for the lock. Instead, it is going to use the timestamp as the tool for ordering the transactions. Okay? So, when we talk about this concurrency control or isolation implementation, two major thing we have seen is lock based protocol and timestamp based protocols. In our next lecture, we will look for granularity, the multi level locks when you apply, how you use various levelized uh, levels of uh, locks and then we will look into the other concepts of asset properties. Thank you.